no longer are the days when they finish an assessment in the classroom that we take that home and grade it or grade it at, you know, over a few days. We, we live score that in front of the students and give them immediate feedback. And we found that that's been helpful for our students. We had planned and focused discussions with Mr. Cash, Mr. Jury, and our OVEC consultants to um, get their ideas on next steps and to present them with what we've been doing and, and again get their feedback, which has been very nice to hear. And it also gives them a chance to see what's happening in the classroom. It's sometimes hard just to hear about it, but when you can go in and see it happening, um, then that's always a win. Um, I'm just running through this. We, we, we talk about the word proficient a whole lot, but when you define that, we have a Gallatin County Upper Elementary definition of proficient, and we're using that word with our students. It's not just it's not just a three or a four or a score, but actually what does that mean and what does that look like to have mastery of our standards? We're holding students accountable for their learning, and um, I think I've included everything on that list. So we're not going to break down and look into the whole next pack, the next piece, but the colorful page is the 30, 60, 90 day plan. Page number three um, goes over the positive reflections. Um, I think if you read the first bullet, this came from a teacher. Um, I'm pretty quick and can respond to things pretty quickly, but I didn't make any of this up. The, these, these things came straight from the teachers. The first one says that they're thinking about assessments more. This is from the teachers, and it's helping me to teach better and to plan better. So you can look through this again when you, when you have time. It seems like higher expectations have surfaced. We love the new learning intentions. We're focusing on accountability. Students know what they're doing. They can, we can see their confidence growing, and we're naming students one by one. Um, where are they? And we're naming them and finding them. So, we started our I ready testing for the final the final time today with reading, and I've been looking at that all day. Um, pretty excited about what I'm seeing, so I, I can't wait to share that with you and to share it with our teachers and our students. We've got some incentives for them. But, but I told Mr. Cash today I was in the hallway and I heard two boys, two fifth grade boys, in the hallway talking, and um, I was washing my hands. Didn't know I was in there, and I, I heard one of them say. I got a, what did you get? I got a 509. You know, and, and they were talking about the I ready score that they asked for. So I, that was really good to hear um, because I expect teachers to be talking about that, but to hear a fifth grade boys before going out to recess say that, it was like, yes. you know, they're, they're owning it too. If you look on the back of that page, there's a list of needs work. I feel like that's a huge win for us. This came from teachers and our ad, admin team identifying things that we need to do next, and those are all real things that we're working on. <clears throat> so, yeah. um, so when we shared out our one of our proficiency meetings with Mr. Jury and, and Mr. Cash, you know, I'm, I'm a visual person and I've, I've handed you all of this, so I wanted to make something really real with you that we have done with our teachers. So anyone who knows me um, knows I have a, a little bit of a sense of humor and um, I like to bring things out and share with others. And um, so I can't share with you the names of students. That would not have been, you know, that's not beneficial for you. And it's confidential information. So we have, we think, before I do this, we've got trifold boards in um, red, yellow, green, and blue. We ordered those. And that's the cut well, When you think of this board, when you see yellow, that is currently where kids are. So when I show this to you, you're going to see some index cards. And it's got kids' names written in different colors. We're going to talk about that. So, when I share this with you, you guys can see too. Okay. Yes, Subway Sue is on there. Oh. The Math Master, Eager Easton, anyone who knows my last name. <laughs> I still call you this Easton. It works, I'll answer. Yeah. Um, Tiny Tim. Okay, so when you look at this, <clears throat> and this is, a fourth, this is a fourth grade example. What's something that you notice? Becky, what do you notice? What's one thing about the names of kids or a code? <coughs> um, well, you could, so you've got codes on each one of them. You're right. So the code at the top means an M means math, an R means reading. If it says AM, that's Amanda New, I'm the teacher, or it says AT, that's Amanda Terrell's the teacher. Every one of our teachers in our school did this. It's holding our teachers accountable. I'm not going to like that when I see that I have a lot of reds on there. What am I doing to help my red kids? Okay, well, Ashley, what's something you notice? 
<laughs> Could be about color. I was gonna say it's colorful. Okay, no. so it's pretty obvious for the kids to be able to see. We have to show the kids because okay. their names are listed. So this is just for staff. Okay, I was wondering. Okay, we're not gonna humiliate. That's what I was gonna say. Like we nope. want to encourage them. Go no, ahead. no, no, no. We do not show this to kids. This is only a data a data board that's shared among the staff. Okay. okay, so this was from the winter. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have a chance to ask the question too. Okay. Don't, I know you're answering. Tell me what I saw you. I'm ready for you. I'm ready for you. Okay. <laughs> so if I am Tiny Town, my name is written in red. So in the fall, I scored red. I was three or more grade levels behind. This is current. So in the winter, this child is on a yellow board. That child grew from three or more levels behind, and now they're on yellow. They're one grade level behind. Tell me what you would be concerned about. Green is next. Okay, green means you're on level. So what am I what am I thinking about these two? These kids were up here. These two kids dropped back. They're now on yellow. Because it's a yellow board. It's a okay. yellow board. Okay. okay. So we take these, we take these off and we move them. So fall, we started them on a board. Winter, okay, Tiny Town moved up, but what am I doing with Horsepower and Wildcat Wilson? I know that Horsepower had their tonsils out during that whole, they were out very much in that, that, that second part of that test. Absent, they, they were not in class. I can tell you I did look up Horsepower today, and she's back where she needs to be. I did see that kid today. That, I used that as an example, but I saw it today. She's already back up. So what, this is, again, a visual for us, and we're moving kids, and it's powerful. It has been so powerful with our teachers. I, we pulled these out Monday on Monday meeting because today, yesterday, today we started this iReady testing, and we asked teachers yesterday, give us 10 kids in that grade level. When you look at your watch, this is good stuff. Uh -huh. As we asked our teachers, tell us 10 names in that grade level that we want off of red or off of yellow, or that we're going to maintain it green or move on to blue. And they were able, I mean, they were naming and claiming kids. And that was what we heard this morning was, oh, they're sending kids to our office, we're hearing kids in the hallway, we're hearing teachers talk about it, like, she moved 60 points, you know, so um, this is this is what we're doing, and, and this is what we will continue. There's some tweaks to it that we'd like to improve on for next year, um, but this this is good stuff. And and um, questions for me about this? Thoughts? How many children have you moved this year? Well, I'll let you know after Wednesday, but as of right now, I knew you'd ask. Okay, so on this sheet, um, I know I put this on here because I, all right, so on the back of that first page, you can see third grade, for example. <clears throat> in the fall, there were 23 kids out of 85 who were on grade level or above. We bumped that up to 43 at winter, and as of today, there are 46 that are on grade level or above, but we still have 14 kids to test. I wonder, are you all getting real time data out of this? Too? I watched them today as they finished up, and I was documenting every one of these. Yes. Okay. Yes. So and then we can go into it. It's also data that you can pass on with the student. Yes. The, yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. What we will do in um, fifth grade, ending fifth, going into sixth, is meet with the team at the middle school and give them all this data on these kids so that they know what's coming. So when you look at those, yes, we had 16 kids in fifth grade who were on grade level or above. Today we had 36. And we still have 14 kids in the test. And when you're collecting this data, like, okay, there are the fall years of 23, winter you went to 43. Right now you're estimating at 46. Uh -huh. Where do you see your weakest area falling back? Falling back? Yeah. Okay, say if you was down here in, uh, say, two grade levels or below, mm -hmm. are you seeing any of the child children falling back out of the, for circumstances that's beyond our control, 
are you seeing those children any of them falling back from the whatever color this is to the red? Yes, we have seen that. And um, when we see something like that, that's when our team gets together and we discuss with teachers. And is it is it something like the kid who had a tonsils out? Is it the kid who's just had someone that's convicted in court and we know that that's a big deal for them? Or is it so? So, yeah, there are circumstances um, that are out of our control. We're also right. seeing that the kids that are red, they're giving their very best effort. And I saw a kid today who grew 59 points in fifth grade, and he's still not off of a first grade level or second grade level. But man, 59 points, we've got to celebrate that. You know, so we don't want him to fall. We don't want him to know he's in red, but that's what we call him. Like, but but what are we doing to keep providing for all that kids now involved with therapy? And then we found out things were going on with him, but, but he still grew 59 points. And the kids that are in red, there's true needs too academically that, that we're giving it our all and, and they're growing. Um, you can see that in the numbers, the preliminary today, but there's there's some stories that are that were right. in our uh, so is this probably one of the better tracking that is that you've done this year? This? Oh yeah. Because it's the way to, it's always the way to the principal, I feel like, in most cases. And now I feel like it's shared. It's all of us. And we talk about the kid who earned 59 points. I'm not the only one who knows that kid. It's all of us. And, and teachers are accountable for that and, and have conversations. And um, yes, it has been, it has been very, very beneficial um, for this at the upper. And I, I've, I've been really proud of, um, of what's happening. I, I included in the packet about the, the boards, um, you know, what do we do if a kid, if a kid drops, what do we do to help, not only that, but the kids that are on green or above, how do we keep them, how do we maintain, how do we keep them engaged and, and wanting to keep learning? Um, and at the very end, I just took some pictures in our hallway, there's some student work, the spring fling was a behavior incentive. <clears throat> The one with the rocket ship is to proficiency and beyond. Any child who passes an assessment in the class or on their eye ready gets to put a star on the bulletin board and we're busting out of room for that, which is a great thing. And then um, in, we, we have math and, and reading scrimmages and um, the kids are, are doing great. And if they, if they don't, we, we don't, we don't take that for an answer. They're going to do it again until they hit proficiency. I love it. Great job. Thank you so much. Yeah, much Any questions? Yeah, what are, what are we doing for the ones that, I mean, I seem like the board has the kids that are proficiency. What are we doing for the ones that moved up, you know, however many points? Well, on April 26th, um, there's some flyers posted around the school. So for this iReady assessment, um, they get to choose a staff member, and we're going to take a pot of the face. And I think I've got about 30 of these pots oh. for myself. So many of us are on the... <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. Well, well, What was that date? We all need to write it down. Um, yeah. Friday, April 26th, I'll be... Uh, yeah, we've all got it coming. But the kids today hearing that, too, is like, I'm going to pot you in the face, and... Um, we also have an incentive for the students that have the student in reading and math who have the most growth um, get to be the assistant principal for the day. So I've got some tasks to you know help get them, and they're pretty riled up about that. We're giving popsicles, we're doing the pies, and then we've also got some some things leading up to KSA like the red carpet event we celebrate. Um, so pretty exciting stuff. It's a great time to be in the upper. Will Miss Terrell and Miss Brown also be participating in the? The high content. Yes. 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 Yes.
kind of getting the, probably the cart in front of the horse, uh, but I'm here to represent the company tonight and tell you how much the relationship means to our business and to our company and, and the investment that, uh, that we've made here with our people and we've, we've got a very good crew and, and I think, uh, you know, things are running very well and uh, I hope that, uh, you know, we can maintain that relationship and, and, and keep moving forward together. So that's... It means it means a lot. That's why I'm here. I, I want to make sure everybody understands. It's very important. Very important to us. And that's that's the reason. Okay. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm not mistaken, we made a decision to bring it back in house. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, I recommended to the board that yeah. uh, we hire six people and bring it back in. The board did approve it unanimously. So maybe you've gotten word of that. Maybe that's why you're here. But, you know, we've had some issues off and on. Um, I mean, we've, we've toured the buildings, and, you know, honestly, we've been pretty impressed. But I know it's a uphill battle. It's an everyday, probably an every minute kind of thing with cleanliness and people, whenever you have people and kids involved. Um, so it's, you know, it's just a decision that we've made to try to go back in-house and see if we can... Be better with you more okay. okay. In, in light of where we're at at, at this point, and I, is it a financial uh, decision? Is that? I, I don't think no, so. No, sir, it was not a financial. Well, yes and no. When I toured those buildings, the, uh, the planning was subpar. The dog and principles, people out in the buildings, the, uh, well, I wasn't going to direct this board. I was the one that originally brought it to the board to subcontract everything out because of where we was at. And now we're at a point where we can bring those back in. I also brought the morning back in-house and we're going to start going it in-house again. We're at a point in our as corporation, uh, school district's path that we're on to bring those back in and start to uh, get it back under the principles and things and back under our uh, We've got uh, David Arvin get it back under him and the superintendent. And that was uh, something they had talked to me about. And, and they can tell you first, I wasn't really on board. And then the more we looked at it, looked at the cost, looked at everything. Yes, a lot of it is cost savings. The, uh, I think we calculated it was savings for uh, around 36, 38,000 a year. Uh, or more. About 50. Yeah. So it, it was uh, the cost was one thing and then the other thing you always hit and miss out there in the buildings man I, I don't everybody who's born knows i say with some of mine i walked through with the press for one day and they was even embarrassed mm -hmm. and that's what that's what made my decision to recommend the board to do what we did yeah. and i will 100 percent stand behind that decision i respect that and, uh, and i'm sorry uh for any deficiencies uh you know that we've had um, the only thing I would ask in, in, uh, in light of uh, the relationship and, and, and what we've done uh, as a company to, uh, and we've, we've invested a lot. I mean, you know, the, the wages we pay are above average. I mean, I've got, we've got two people at $20 an hour. We've got a, a couple of them at, you know, 18. I mean, it, it takes that to get people, you know, to yeah. number one, do this job. It's the most thankless job on the planet until it's not getting done. And then it's the focus of everyone's universe, you know. And uh, in, in, in light of that, I mean, I, I, the only thing I would ask is in August of 2022, our company was purchased by Marsden Services out of St. Paul, Minneapolis. We went from 600 employees to over 10,000. Uh, and what that means is financially, the resources of our company is a lot larger than, than what it was when we first got here. Um, I would love the opportunity to at least uh, sit down with the district and talk about it financially and, and what it would take to make sense to, you know, so that it would work for you and, uh, and, and see if it would work for us. And, and there's some things that we can do. Uh, to try and help that, uh, you know, that situation. And, and if, it, if it works great, if it doesn't, fine. I mean, uh, it, it's, it's a very, anybody that's, that's doing any hiring right now that has a business understands how tough this market is. And she's got six, seven. Seven. She's actually, we're actually one over. 
seven people that are really good people that are here now. And, and uh, you know, we've talked to the principals and we've, you know, not I'm not disagreeing. I mean, you know, on any given night, there might be something that, you know, that got missed or that, that didn't look right. And I, and, and, and I'm, you know, I'm saying it wasn't the case, but I think we're in a pretty good spot. Uh, we right were, now. yes. And, uh, I was hearing, hearing very little things. Yeah, and in a in in light of that, I would love the opportunity to at least present something and, and have a discussion surrounding uh, what it would take financially to keep the the district on board. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I'd at least like that that opportunity. Is that possible? If you want to leave your card, I mean, we can reach out if that's possible. I look that I expect us to go forward with our decision. You know, we may revisit it in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll see how successful we are. So if you want to leave your contact information, we sure. can certainly keep it and see what evolves. Mm -hmm. Is there any other ideas? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Appreciate you coming in. Well, yeah, Thank you. absolutely. Thank you. Wouldn't, wouldn't be most of the time. Thank you. All right. Absolutely. I, I really do. I appreciate it. All right. And we appreciate what you all done. We really do. But where we're at right now, it makes better financial sense to uh, bring it back in house. Mm -hmm. And like Becky said, like right now, like I said, it, I would be a no. And I would still stand behind my decision, what I recommended to the board. But at some point in the future, if we see that, hey, this isn't working out for us, then absolutely we'd like to sit down and talk to you. Yeah, yeah. I remember sitting in this room when the board voted us in, and yep. uh, one of the principals said to me, we can start tonight. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and we came running, and, uh, you know, that w within a couple of days, I had 20 people out here playing in schools and getting them, you know, getting them back in shape. And it's not an easy job. No, it's, it's constant. Not. And, you know, and it's funny that some of us have toured the buildings and thought, hey, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. But then different, you know, tomorrow, it's not so good. So it's just okay. so up and down. But appreciate you stopping in. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you. We really appreciate everything you all can. Yeah. Really thank you. Yeah. Thank I, thank I, you. I appreciate that. And, and thanks for the consideration. I really do. Thank you. Yeah. And I appreciate you. It's good to see you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. I love it. See, everybody's hand. It means a lot. It really does. <laughs> It does. Thanks so much. Thanks. All right. Much. Thank you. And if that is a consideration where we can at least okay. have a chance to take a look at it financially, we're glad to do it. Okay. All right. Thank All right. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Public comment. Anyone else? Any audience to address the board? All right. Moving on to board member comments. Marcus, I'll start with you. Uh, a few things there. I've been talking with uh, Wayne today. Called it. Let's call it Lillard. Uh, Masters, master talked with the judge, the judge, and the. Uh, I can either do it now on the board member comment, or I can wait to get to, uh, to we get down on the discussion item to discuss what we talked about. I'll just do it under Zoom, Miss Becky. Okay. The only thing I got to say is uh, everybody keep a man in her family and her prayers and stuff. I couldn't imagine. I know it's coming. Parents might outlive us, but we we're. Actually, we're going to outlive them. I couldn't imagine losing them. My parents, I really couldn't. So I just ask everybody to keep the Amanda and her family in your all's prayers. That's it. Thank you. John? Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. All right. I don't think I have anything at this time to do that. All right. Staff is just uh, school reports. So, um, Mr. Trent. All right, All right. So what's new in your world? Sounds good on you. All right, so good afternoon, guys. Um, a pretty nice outfit. Yeah, actually, you can tell. I've uh, heard that. I've heard that. Checking me out. I walk in. I'm dressed for the weather. He's over at Flushing and Guns, and it made the game. Sure. Oh, we did. All right. So make sure you keep on track of those. The muscles are still on the, on the way. <laughs> so as of right now, uh, are you the EOP scores came back? Um, oh, we had eight. What, what EOP board? and uh, sorry, yeah, I was actually probably playing. So our end of program assessment. Okay. So uh, every time there is something like a like a pathway that a student chooses, uh, after I believe it's three years, three years. Yeah, after every three years, uh, you go and take a test to kind of get certified for it. I guess it's more like a, hey, you're you're good in this pathway. Like you know you know yourself, picking up classes for it, you're all good. So we had our scores come back for it. 
Uh, we had 81 passing assignments, and while I would love to say that's out of a large number, uh, I was not able to find the number yet. Uh, so uh, we have 75.5% of our seniors transition ready, opposed to 64.7% last year. So pile back for seniors, that's a massive jump. Uh, we're actually still waiting for a couple scores to come back for seniors because of how many we took. Uh, so that number could still increase. Um, next testing coming up is our state testing. It's about three weeks out. In all of our classes, we're, or I guess not all our classes, but in like junior, junior, sophomore, and freshman classes, they're practicing, uh, they're studying, they're doing anything extra they can to get higher scores. And to motivate everyone, we are having a pep rally, and hopefully there will be some morale. Uh, last week, we had FBLA compete at a state conference. Uh, I did not compete. I didn't get too much information on it. I'm not sure about placements, although I could have that at the next meeting if you guys would like. Uh, so we have prom next Friday, also uh, very excited. We have Senior Decision Day next Thursday, which I was just talking to Mr. Cash about. Senior Decision Day is kind of just what a senior does after high school. Everyone has so many different paths they can take. I mean, you can go to the military, you can go straight into college, you can go straight into the workforce. And this is just a day to kind of honor the seniors and whatever they chose. <clears throat> We held a scholarship workshop for juniors and seniors today to aid in becoming more knowledgeable of scholarships and grants. Any kind of money that they can get after high school is definitely going to be helped. Uh, we had kind of a financial advisor come in and help fill out FAFSAs, answer any kind of questions they had, uh, actually just straight help with scholarships too. So I think it was a pretty benef beneficial thing. I think he was here half an hour, two hours. So he definitely got his time out there. Uh, and also there, uh, the high school, they're in the process of getting applications out for the next student board member because I was just talking to Mr. Cash about this. Uh, after this one, I have two meetings left. And then I'll be out. Yeah, fast. Yeah, this, this year went very fast. So I thank all of you for that. That's all I have for you. Any questions from anyone? Thanks. Nope. So I do have one. So for your testing coming up, how are you preparing for that? Personally? No. Just okay. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> so the reason I ask personally is seniors don't take our state test now. Uh, all of the uh, the benchmark numbers are from our younger years. Um, like I said, I think they're just going back over old content. Um, at least in math class, I know especially they are reading, they're learning some comprehension, they're learning um, I believe how to properly use even just simple things like commas, annotations, um, apostrophes, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Or writing conjunctions. There you go. Okay. Um, 75 is your senior. 75 is senior? Yeah, yeah that, that's not for the. So they're up almost 10%. So that's part yeah. of yeah. our school accountability as well. Yeah, the, um, the EOP testing, I there's not really too much we can okay. do to prepare for that. Yeah. Um, I believe last year we did have kind of a baseline we followed, but this year I don't know if we followed the same one. Love your details. Very detailed. Thank you very much. All right, enrollment report, Mr. Orr. So you've got, you know, enrollment report uh, sitting sitting there with you. Uh, we're actually, uh, we enrolled eight students uh, since our last meeting. Uh, just a quick update on uh, some of the different things that we have going on. Uh, should be hearing from Tennis Technologies for the end of the week uh, and getting a start date for when they'll be here to get uh, started on resurfacing our tennis courts. Um, for everyone, should be on site later on this week, uh, starting on the groundwork for the football field. And uh, we're looking as we get down with the budget from our athletic complex project, uh, with around uh, seventy-five to eighty thousand dollars left uh, once all that work is completed. <clears throat> Are we unable to host the track event right now because they've not given that correct facility back to the district? Office? Correct. So what and what they're waiting on, and then speaking with Revlon, they said that you know the company. Uh, out of New York will be coming down, putting the track surface down and give them a week's notice. They're watching the weather. Uh, we can't, they're going to have a minimum 50 degree surface temperature. We're still dropping below 50 uh, some nights. Uh, but, you know, 
they're they're keeping an eye on that as soon as they can get in to, to start that they're wanting to get down to it. It'll probably be a week and a half to two weeks uh, once they start uh, to get to get it completed. A couple of days to put the surface. Realistically, down. then this school year, probably not. None of our kids are going to get on that. Probably not. The track surface probably will not be complete uh, there, in time to, to be able to host anything this year. I know we need the 50 degrees horizon for the three days. Our track season's already started. Now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any way? I mean, it, 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 it's up to us. Track, track season runs really long. I mean, it's a the state track meet is right around graduation or a little after. I mean, if they were able to get in in early May, depending on the schedule, I mean, there's an outside chance that, you know, maybe they could have a small meet with some locals uh, to be able to come over. I mean, I'm not, it's not a hundred percent no, uh, but I would say maybe more unlikely than likely. It'd be nice if they could at least practice something. Yeah. Well, it's hard to control the weather, you know that. Coach Miler did schedule a late meet, a, a smaller, instead of having the 10, 12 teams, <clears throat> like three or four county teams. So she's got that on her schedule. If the weather cooperates, and they can come in. So, you know, she was like that. She was, she was hoping to be able to do something. Ground temperature wise, probably after next week, I said ground temperature should be 50 degrees above the rise. They're just getting late. Are they planning to get laid on that port? Is that just when they can come in? So they're saying that, or are they waiting on us to tell them to come in? No, it's their decision because in it, the warranty. Mm -hmm. if, if it gets below temperature, from what they've explained, I'm by no means a track expert, but you've got um, the asphalt that they put the, the, the rubber track surface on top, and if it cools off, then it breaks the bond, and then you'll start getting those pockets later. You know, where it comes late because it's sealed. Okay. Is the, is the mud and everything off of it, the dirt and all that? They'll do that right before they spray it. Just clean it one time. Anyway, we can get the spray it off there. As I said, it, the board is the one that said not until they turned it over. But as long as they're not putting equipment and things, well, when I say equipment, as long as they ain't spilling stuff on it, we can get that dirt on practice. We held them last year. We I'm, I'm good, and I think the coaches would be really good, you know, just keep it like It's not a track surface, but it's blacktop. Right. You know, so they can't like be drawn. Yeah, I know. So I'm, I'm a little confused here. Or, the track's not done. They're just going to run on the blacktop. They ain't got the lines on it. It's the only thing that they can get the lines on it. Hmm? Is there a surface on it? They're running surface? No. It's blacktop. They run on blacktop. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know that they're that supposed to be. So what do they normally run? Especially rubber on it, right? Or something like that? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I'm looking at the record expert. Yeah. And, I mean, I hate to court about their tracks. And well, you, you all can thank Jake, the track team can, for not getting this. <laughs> and maybe, maybe everybody else, they can make sure they can do it. I'll talk to you all. Thank Jake. There is something they can do. And Trevor has been very excited about our students getting on it. Yeah. I mean, it's not like we don't we built it now you just look at it and can't get on it so i'll work with them before they can get a little bit of something you know, i got remember he's from carroll county so i'm trying to keep it back Tonight, because Miss New talked a lot about what all four schools are doing, kind of in different ways. They're kind of all doing the same thing. Uh, that's that's the result of the 30, 60, 90 day plans, the, the market proficiency that we have. It's just a big push, um, and uh, we're all excited about it. You know, we talk about it a lot. It doesn't stop after ASA testing, it'll keep going. And uh, we'll, we'll develop the next 30 days, which will be through the summer, then the first 30 days of school, and the second 30. We'll just keep building on that as we go. Um, I'm working with principals on getting all their evaluations in with teachers and how we're looking at building on those, using those as a uh, improvement tool starting in the next year. So this summer we'll be looking for PD to help teachers if we see something that um, they need help with, you know, it's our job to find it for them. So using that evaluation process for that. Um, 
spent a lot of time posting positions the last couple of days, uh, doing federal reports, spending reports, uh, all that comes due at the end of the year. Uh, and then KSA schedule, we start, um, start our big round of testing May the 6th. We'll do some preliminary testing the week before that with students that are coming in the district to test and some accommodations will do that. But May 6th, that week is our big testing week. That's, uh, that's all I have tonight. Unless you have any questions. Questions from anyone? All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Mr. Cash. All right. As usual, I mean, people are glad most of my stuff's been in. You know, you, you feel me. Um, I want to thank Miss New and her team, first of all, uh, and her school. Mr. Jury alluded to it with, with uh, 90 days proficiency was a big push. It was accountability factor. You know, a lot of times we talk and we seem to not get very far. All four buildings, I'm very impressed with the, you know, their performance. He alluded to the EOP, you know, that's over 10% gain, which is, that, that's, that's a lot. I mean, that's good things. And they're not content or satisfied with quitting. But uh, when Miss News showed me the, the real board, uh, I wasn't close enough to see student names, which I would be allowed to. But the ownership of the students is, is, is what I get out of that as superintendent. And her, her staff, her teachers, and you know, anytime you have change, there's more accountability. There, there's sometimes pushback, but, but the feedback, the questions she gave you, the books and the comments from her teachers were, were just wonderful. But, you know, they're owning it and they're going after it, and that's that's all you can ask for. Really proud of you as well as other schools, but thank you. Um, keeping the pace going, uh, pleased to announce. So I get the letter early. Not allowed to tell anybody. Now it's out on social media. But we did have uh, the 2024 Governor Scholar Program announced. Uh, we did have uh, one of our students were accepted, and it's Mr. Landon Johnston. Um, so really excited about that for him and his family. Uh, we had two alternates, so lots of times alternates get in. So I don't want to build false hope for them, but uh, uh, you didn't. Uh, thanks for making me look good. <laughs> uh, he really helped me as you've grown in this job. Uh, but anyway. Uh, uh, now you really threw me for a little bit. Find you any ice cream. Uh, but anyway, Mr. Johnston is competing tonight in the NCKC. They're doing Northern Central Kentucky something tennis thing. We're actually hosting it. Um, again, there's another competition. We'll have new tennis courts, fix the crack, reseal them and paint them. So, uh, but they are in the tournament. It actually starts tonight. So if we get through the board meeting, we have lights now, thanks to the board. And uh, so if you want to go and watch the, the kids play or students uh, play tennis, be a good night. Uh, boys baseball, uh, we're runner up in the LA. I know a couple of them stopped me over at the high school. They were really excited about that. Uh, one last little gig, the scoreboards was really impressed with uh, lots of positive feedback. Um, so I was really excited to not seen those. Uh, when, you, when we leave, you can drive out. Um, and they really look good. I, I was happy. Youth Service Center is sponsoring a pre-prom awareness on Wednesday the 24th, and the speaker is actually a survivor of the Carrollton bus crash. So Youth Service Center working with the high school do something for um, drunk driving awareness and everything before every prom. It's hard to believe it's prom time again, but you know, it, it's everything's moving fast. Decision day that he did bring up, but I want to invite the board members. Uh, the first time, my first year, I got to go to the decision day. I didn't really know what it was. But it's really a special day. Uh, there's several things that, that the seniors get to do, but to see the decision day and where they're going to school, if they're going to the military or something, or whatever they decide, ATC uh, or in the private state, it's, it's just really cool to get them to, to say, here's my goals. Uh, so if you have an opportunity, it's at 9 a.m. Utilize about an hour and a half, I think, if I'm correct, from last year. We have two new directors, the Director of Instructional Support, I'm pleased to announce it's Mr. Matt Level. Uh, we have a new director of virtual education and extended school service. Uh, it's Ms. Angela Lewis. Um, and yes, we have two principals uh, positions posted. And we actually start tomorrow with training the SPGM Council um, on what it takes now to, to hire a building principal. Uh, and lastly, we do, it was uh, confirmed by the Senate, uh, I think 37 to 1. We have a new education commissioner, and it's Mr. Robbie Fletcher. So, and that concludes my report. So, what day is the decision day? April 25th, okay. 9 a.m. 
answer your question. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to SBBM agenda minutes. Everyone has a chance to look over. Questions? Comments? <coughs> Just looking for. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Just looking. Human resource actions, everyone review. All right, moving on to discussion items, uh, plane project update. Sure. Good evening, everybody. I'm Brad Audley with Train. Thanks for having me tonight. Uh, Mr. Cash invited me to come here tonight and give you guys an update of where everything stood. So it's probably been uh, August or so since I talked to you guys last. Uh, so we finished construction around August, September, and then we had some delays with some of the rooftops that we were uh, uh, trying to get set for you guys. I think we completed that in September. Um, since then, we've worked through some punch list items, uh, you know, November, December, uh, I think all the way through February. Um, and here in the last, last five weeks, uh, Mr. Cash, myself, and Mr. Arnold, uh, Ar Arvin, excuse me, uh, <laughs> have been working to, to get this thing closed out for you guys and uh, work through some communication issues. And uh, part of that's on me, you know, using construction terms that I guess I expected Mr. Uh, Mr. Cash and Mr. Arvin to, uh, to understand. And so I uh, met uh, last week, I guess it was, Wednesday, is that correct? Correct. Uh, had a really good meeting. And, and hash all this out and make sure that we're communicating on the same level. Everybody's understanding the same thing. Uh, had a couple of things that were repairs on some units that were uh, put in service, had, had failures, and we needed to replace some parts put on them. Uh, so got that all taken care of this week. And so I think we're in a good place. Uh, did I miss anything, Mr. Cash? No, I, I think we're in a great spot and hope before the end of the week to be, uh, be wrapped up and be ready to move on to the next phase of this project, which will be for us to meet with. Uh, I think it's your intelligent services team and sit down and go through that and we'll be able to set that meeting very very soon correct yeah and so um this is a multi-phase process for us obviously construction was first phase and that's part of your uh, package that, that we both delivered and built for you guys um you have one year intelligence service and so what that means is um, you'll have an energy or optimization engineer assigned to you uh, so we get quarterly consultations on how the building can perform and how your energy usage is decreased then overall building comfort, you know, so looking at different things of operation schedules, um, equipment performance, all these different things, and then a help desk. Um, so we have a help desk at our central office in Louisville that's staffed with trained technicians. Uh, so anytime one of the maintenance guys or uh, Mr. Arvin has a question about the system or needs something changed, picks up the phone and call those, call those guys, and they're your disposal to change that. Um, so again, that's part of the, the one year intelligence service agreement and uh, obviously completion of the project. Is what triggers that to go into effect. And so, uh, uh, talking with these guys last week, we were uh, eager to get that going for you and let you take, uh, take advantage of those systems. So. Okay. Do we still owe you money? Uh, I think there is uh, an outstanding invoice for 391000 I'm going to pay that. You can make a motion to pay it. Has, has, it, has it has ever been submitted? I would like to read. I, I don't necessarily agree with that number, but if I can get my, I, I'd rather you approve a specifically pay a specific pay application. Yeah. Um, has that has that been submitted? I believe so. I think it's in, is it in two separate applications? Uh, I think there's two separate ones. Yes. And, well, fine. I'm going to see if I'm going to pay train wheel. How's it? Do you have the two pay applications? I can. I can get that. I would just like to. Yeah, that was that was a round number. Yeah, that's not. I just that number was not exact. So yes, that's why. Yeah, he can get the pay Put me on alert. Can you get the two pay? So you're comfortable moving forward without? Yes. Yeah, and Mr. Arvin, you're comfortable as well. Yeah. Play nice tonight. Okay. Okay. Play nice. Anything else that you want to add? May I add one thing? Sure, Brad. Right <laughs> Brad talked about, you know, after the project is accepted and closed out, that, uh, that there's a service called Intelligence Services, which is a year. Um, that's an optimization program, but also what you all signed up for is a, a guaranteed energy savings contract. So it's, I know it's been a couple of years. We've been in construction for a while, and, you know, last one, 2% wrapped up, and there was a little, uh, Trying, but I'm glad we're there. But um, so when this project does get closed out, we start our guarantee with a savings. So what that means is that there's a in a contract, there's an agreed to 
I guess we calculate an amount that we're going to going to do so much savings every year, mm -hmm. energy savings. We have to measure and verify that by law, deliver to you an annual report whether we met the guarantee or not. So that's part of what the legislation is, a guaranteed in savings contract. I think it's a 20 year guarantee mm -hmm. that we're on the hook for 20 years to make sure we meet this guarantee. So we'll hear from you every year. Yeah, uh, yeah unfortunately. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> I didn't think it like that. <laughs> no, but the guarantee will start sure. officially when the project gets closed out. Mm -hmm. So whenever that is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other questions I can answer for you guys? You guys don't do sound <laughs> systems, do you? Going. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Do we still have a week's worth of stuff? We've got to we we did last week, and they worked through, and we actually met this afternoon, and uh, they got it. You're good. Got it completely. So, so, that's 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 yeah, I mean, I think that it is part of the site. I mean, it's just one. So it's the stuff. It's not constructed. It's more of a warranty that we're not we're not going. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll resend it. Yeah, I submit it. I'll resend it. I, I can. Would you all go? Yeah, this, uh, I'm that's okay. In terms of construction and I guess there's substantial completion as a definition for that, that, that the system was installed and it's operable and being used out there. That's one thing. And the other thing is a modern completion. Everything is done. When was your final construction? I have to defer Brad. You know, it's very gray. I'm rough. In terms of, you know, what's Project warranty or what's construction related. Mm -hmm. But I think from last week, so that was there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we got that list cleared up in terms of these are the items that if we take care of these items, everyone is good. So I think let's just call it punch list. I will ask the question again. Is that so good? Uh, no, may have to defer to Brad on. Was uh, that warranty work or was that a punch list work that you all was waiting on? So uh, I would consider it warranty work. That was part of our disagreement, uh, and, and I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, receiving the sign if we don't already have it. Yeah. Will I, you I, send me a sign one tomorrow if she doesn't already have it? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I'm good with it. We just don't have the sign second one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But maybe she's got long. Like a contingent. I'll, you, I will you draw a motion. I'll put it in the zone. Yes. Yeah. All right. I'll hand it up on him. Give me a Jake. Is that okay, Mr. Okay. So I'm whatever is owed, but you're not putting an amount on it. Contingent. Well, the amounts are 175, 466. Seventy-two, one hundred seventy-five thousand twenty six dollars seventy-two is what they sent a pay us for that we've got here at date of December seventh, two thousand twenty-three, and that left two hundred twenty-six thousand one hundred thirty-seven dollars ninety-seven cents, which we at least can't find a pay up for. Maybe you I think she's it. checking out. Yeah. Okay. So, so a motion to pay a second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Four. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Aviation discussion. Okay. I'm going to have this put on here. You all know I've been one of the things that I've been looking at from the uh, superintendent. It's the airport command here in the county. It's a huge step for our school district. And the possibilities with it is unlimited. I was talking with uh, Wayne Rasmus, I've talked with Paul Willard, some of the masters. The uh, masters talked with the judge. And what we all have said that we need to do because the federal monies, to the, I forgot what they call it initial. It's another one of the initial organizations. The, uh, they're getting ready to start the hangers out there, I believe, Wayne. And you all went from single story to two story. Well, what's who's the holding the grant money? What is that? Initiative? Well, the, the money's all coming from the state right now. All the federal money's right. been spent. Right, but what is that? Mm -hmm. It was a three-letter organization. 
instead of the like Kane Department says four. Well, Kane, yeah, the Kentucky Department of Aviation. They yeah. they're the managing partner between us and the state government. So we're excavating out there right now about a million dollar project to put the dirt where the hangars and the and the terminal building will be set. So that's going to be probably through the summer. So we're hoping and we're designing hangers and terminal building right now. So as soon as that dirt gets in place, we're hoping to start setting some seal. And what the, but we have to go through that bid process to do all that first. And what the Paula and I talked about, and the masters, the, uh, they'd like to see us put together a board, a joint board with the county, with uh, <clears throat> me, uh, Wayne and Paula will be representing the aviation board, Tony and David, the school, uh, Donnie Sullivan, since it's in his district, the master at the MJ, and then two board members on that to work and look at building an aviation program. Uh, like we saw talking earlier today, once one of them structures is done, they might lease us a structure, and I'm just throwing a number out there for a dollar a year, but we would finish the inside of it out from the aviation, as far as the maintenance, airframes, power plant site, and then the aviation program down here to combine it all to start a countywide aviation program. Uh, the it, it would be a way there's other interest that's trying to come into this airport as Wayne can tell you that the county's holding them off right now until we get our board in place. And at that point in time it would come through the school district and through this board and things as far as uh, the flight school and everything else for our students and other counties that opens us up to a lot of opportunities in other counties. I've been running the numbers and things on it. That can be cash fluent with the, the, within the first year of its with the board and stuff. And what the board would do is collaborate with the county uh, aviation board and it's uh, even representation of everybody. And then uh, also Chuck and Ryan would be on there, but they would be not voting members on the board. They would just be there, just kind of their, their capacity uh, and things to look at. Let me add something. Or if we recently traveled down to Bardstown and they've got an aviation program down there that four schools work out of. We were really impressed. They've got two instructors, one that does the from the ground level of aviation all the way up to getting your pilot's license. And then they the juniors and seniors would move over to the power plant and construction of an aircraft. And they have constructed four aircraft in the last aircraft. four years. They got over ninety thousand and they're selling for four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. Yeah, you know, the kid the kit that they buy is around $100,000. Yeah. So they've been selling them around three fifty. dollars So it's been a real good program from there. And I was really impressed with seeing the different levels that they have down there. It's just really two to three instructors. So they have like a creative curriculum. Mm -hmm. I wonder how they... They've had it for about together. six years now, I guess. So it's, uh, I mean, it takes through, I mean, they're not only building planes, but they're, some kids have elected to go into the engineering side of it. They're building, they're building the drones from scratch. And it just, it just gets everybody on board with the way avionics works. I think it's, uh, Paul was talking about, he was talking about it, the board will go look at those programs of some other states, look at some over in Ohio. Uh, come up with us a good aviation program here that works for the county, works for the school, and then they would all, they're also wanting to see it, and I would recommend it because you're talking just for a uh, private pilot's license with IFR, or I'm sorry, BFR through visual flight rating, that's $12,500 student that's coming from the public, other counties, other areas, that would be bringing in 10 students is 125000 a year. And that's just for a private, they don't uh, count your IFRs, they don't count your uh, twin or CFI, CFIs. Okay. All right, so what are the next steps? Uh, the board approved to set a board up with this and then the, the board members would be. Right, who do you propose? It's up to the board. <laughs> Is there any conflict? 
Jerry, no, I view it. I mean, it's no different than a committee. There's only two okay. of you all, so it's not ever serving on any kind of committee. I was chuckling because I assumed Harvey's wanted to serve as a no, board so member. But, it's up to the board. Um, I've always been that way. You all know it. But there's no, 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 no conflict there. Okay. Uh, it's just a subsidiary. I'd like to see Becky on it where she knows people at the uh, state level and other things before she works to KSBA because at some point they should be able to get into the to, uh, to talk to them. There's just a lot of opportunities there and Becky works at Pritchard Committee. She's got connections there at the KSBA and the other committee she sits on the state and then but I would recommend her as one on her because it should be the pleasure of the board. of the groundswell profile information for Gallatin County. So you might remember I brought the uh, profile for Gallatin County at last meeting. I didn't bring it tonight. I figured you still had it. Plus it's on the website. So it's easier to read there. So interesting thing. Um, I threw the whole summary into um, artificial intelligence. It was messing around with it was a lot. Um, and it gave me, it spit out this summary. I just asked for a summary. And so it gave me the summary. And I thought it was worthy of just kind of visiting, like, kindergarten readiness. Um, you know, we know where we're low. And while the summary here says we've generally improved, I mean, that may be like a point or so. I mean, it's not not significantly has it improved. But um, it was kind of an experiment, first of all. But then I just thought it would be good to just take a couple of minutes and just um, talk about like preschool. Are we already advertising for preschool and trying to get the word out and getting these kiddos in, I don't know if they put it out, in the I know fall? We, we talked about it. I don't want to speak. But they started preschool recruitment to sign up. That, that part of what. Um, Ms. LeBlanc is done. Right. With the yeah. cutouts and stuff yeah. today, yeah. yeah. Okay, It'll be so soon. it's coming, yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah, it's never too early, right, mm -hmm. to try to get all these kids in so we can eventually improve kindergarten readiness. Um, we're, we're actually but, sending out um, help packets to parents. Awesome. Little Little flip cards. Um, it's, it's a big project. A lot of people involved in okay. you know, send that home for parents that have resources to help their kiddos prepare for preschool and kindergarten. Good. So yeah. I really just want to check the box to make sure we're doing or remind us what we're, what we're doing in these areas. So reading proficiency for third grade, what resources are we utilizing? Is that I ready? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, in the 30, 60, 90. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably the same for math, third grade math. We know that is uh, so important. 30, 60, 90, I ready. And we're at our math curriculum is wrapping up, but we're looking at vetting programs to purchase or to access, maybe not purchase, um, for the upcoming school. We did that with ELA already, so now we're working on it. Okay. Eighth grade proficiency, anything special that we're allocating for that to help with eighth grade reading proficiency? Anything? Same thing we did that curriculum review last year. Uh, big, big part of the year, they're, they're um, 
using the same curriculum, but we found that there were supports with that curriculum that we were not utilizing. And part of that's because we're, we're not doing a good job training our folks how to use the resources we have. Okay. So a lot of focus has been on training how to use what we have and getting those supports and resources into the hands of the students to help them uh, march towards efficiency. That, that's, a, that's a big focus we have right now because we're using instructional resources that have been developed by ev evidence-based research, and it means they have to be implemented in a certain way for them to work. Um, being, a, being an ag teacher and growing up on a farm, yeah. I did things just the way I learned to do them and taught them the way that I learned how. Yeah. But with some of this this reading and writing and math and some other stuff, there's there's a lot of research in how to teach that and how kids learn best because there's there's eighty or seventy you right there all seven of you learn kind of a different way. Well, there's approaches now that can help all seven of you learn in the same setting. And that's that's the resource to look for. It takes a lot of training, yeah. even for the experienced teacher that's been teaching for a long time to use these resources. So that's that's where a lot of focus is on. Yeah. Okay. Would you say the same for eighth grade math efficiency? Yes, we're we're looking at our our instructional resources for math at the moment. Our our last meeting will be next Tuesday where we have the whole district math team K through twelve come in and we've we've been talking about this because we want it to align from K through twelve, make sure we're hitting all the standards and make sure we're using the resources that are available to us. It'd just be great to see some of these scores and go up. I think you will. I think you will. Yeah, over, yeah. over the year. All right, that's just, um, I just kind of highlighted a median, median household income for the county, 58000 I thought that was interesting. Um, children in poverty, and I'm not saying anything that you all don't already know. Percentage below 200% poverty in children. Uh, in poverty is 24%, 45% respectively. Just things that we need to keep in mind as we make our decisions. Um, the other concern I had was the chronic ab ab absenteeism. And I get that, you know, with sickness, illness, family issues, transportation, but you can't teach them if they're not here, right? Anyway, just wanted to uh, revisit it. Uh, question along these guidelines on this data and things. I'm not to ask John there at what age group we lose them. It's kind of getting too late. If they get frustrated with things, and he just tell me there. But the uh, are we going to do a summer school program this year, full summer school program? Yes. Yeah. And when does that start? Not not the week right after, but the, the I think everybody gets a week to kind of prepare, so they, they and then we start. Yeah. yeah, and then we go first. Are we gonna run one this year? We're gonna run two, like we did a couple of years ago, where we ran ran one and so many days, and then ran another one. Are we just gonna run one this year? What are we? And how long is it gonna run for? Each each building is gonna kind of create their own. They're gonna run it for twelve days, I think, if I remember correctly. We're also continuing the ESL summer camp as a part of that summer school program. It's eight days, I think. Eight or nine. It's a little bit summer school. Well, that's four days a week for three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Okay. Yeah. So it's summer school going around for three weeks. Yes. And are we going to we going to full blown advertise that, run buses and everything? Or? Running buses. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> I know it works different for each school. With the, the lower and upper, those parents are being contacted now, I think, in middle school, they're being contacted now. High school's a little bit different beast. Um, they know they need to come in or not. A lot, most of it's for credit recovery at the high school level and middle school level. For the lower and upper, it's if they're behind uh, one or more grade levels, they come in and work on certain skills. And uh, we, 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 we talked, we had a big meeting last week about the summer school we talked about what are some ways that we can make this not feel like school during the summer make it fun give some activities in there um and, and kind of maybe to change some attitudes about having i hate coming to school or i don't want to come to school but make it fun for them during the summer and the teacher make it fun for the teacher as well and tony are you all set up this year to get good data from that 
for those kids that because we're the testing and zooming and stuff where you all have enough data when those children go in there when they finish up will you all be able to test them or something to see so, if they pro uh, progressed any yeah they'll have in the end of the year i ready score uh and then we can do the same thing with them on you know the last day uh and be able to look at any potential growth that has happened throughout the course of summer school with our numbers and as far as people behind and then john told me there and we've said it before john even told us when he's a principal we got to target them lower buildings mm -hmm. to catch these children up i had no idea when he gave me that number there i could tell you the hardest thing about summer school right now and, that, and i know miss new will shake her head it's the pay that's twenty-seven dollars an hour flat rate for teachers to come in and teach summer school. And watch it too much. <clears throat> the the year that we had the Esther funding, we could offer their daily wage. That worked well. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's the pay. It's it's hard to get them to come in here during the summer. So they feel like twenty-seven hours too much. Or? Yeah, it's too much. They want to get some other. Uh, the other part of that is it's classified too. Um, it's just it's a hard sale. Um, Doing best we can. Um, is there any way to have it for teacher friends that we'd be mad at for this? But uh, I feel all right with twenty-seven dollars an hour for supervising at your meeting, which I think is probably what they're doing in the uh, middle school, and high school, middle school, and high school. Yes. I could certainly see you know, make an argument for your daily rate if you're doing your normal teaching or above and beyond. Which is what I'm hearing more of the elementary mm -hmm. would be what you're doing. I think to me they're just two different things. They are. Elementary teachers are already working the planning and, and what it's going to take to approach different skill levels by students. You get all range in summer school, especially at the lower and in the upper elementary. And I think your motivation of children changes. I'm hoping I was never in the elementary, but I, I would hope that they still want to learn. You, you reach a point somewhere in middle school that they've got frustrated, they've given up, they've accepted to some degree this is who I am and what this is going to be. And that motivation factor is a hard one to get. Um, so I understand why we do ingenuity, but to me, I don't see an ingenuity teacher doing something above and beyond that is. I'm just being as honest as I can. Yeah, it's, I it's, it. it's credit recovery. It's, it's yeah. credit recovery. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't vote yes to pay more at that level. But at the lower levels, where I think the motivation of the kids still there, you're hoping to get the growth. But one is checking off the minimum they have to do to be able to get the credit or to move on to high school. And the other one is hopefully getting them up to par where we need them to be. And I just, I, I see those as two different things. That's on that extra day in size schedule that full hasn't been approved yet. What hasn't been approved? That $27 an hour, it, that's on that extra day schedule that hasn't yeah. been approved yet. And that's why John and I asked if we uh, was running a full bone. Uh, I'd be willing to pay teaching the family race to run a, a full bone summer school program. If I see the issues. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But realistically, I don't know, you are the experts. Do you see the need to do that at middle and high school where motivationally kids have a lot of times checked out? Well, our goal is to build, you know, the upper middle and high school is more of a credit recovery. You're behind on credit, you need this to graduate, you need this to go into high school. They have targets at the elementary to where they're trying to get reading and math to grade level. But ideally, we have thought, um, we would like to get it to where summer school is not always a catch up or I'm behind. We would like to do, and, and that's maybe where the curriculum piece comes in later. We now have an ESS coordinator, the, the director of virtual and ESS. We, we would like to do some enrichment, exploratory. That, that's when you can really get out of the box and it doesn't have to be in the set standards, but you know, you can do lots of cool science, especially. Um, but that's, that's our goal. We're not there for that. Well, that could even pull in your gifted and talent. Yes, and that's it. But I don't, I, we want to change the perception that summer school is always a negative. Yeah. I'm behind. I got to go back to school. I'm farther behind. And that builds the negativity, in, in my opinion. What we want to do is dream of a time to where we can have 
you know, the, the exploratory, the enrichment, the advancement, the gifted and talented, you know, open up doors and things like that. Um, do a summer school PE, you know, for eighth grade freshmen. And then that way they can have that knocked out and then that gives them another uh, credit or college course or something like that that they can take. We're, we're getting there. It, it's we've just not pulled it off yet. What would you need us to do as a group to you know, really help facilitate that? Would be well, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, surplus duty schedule is on our agenda number nine. So, um, discuss that then. Well, or, you know, make additions if we. Oh, we like need to do that. That's, that. that's the biggest. When I'm talking hey, to principals and they're trying to get teachers, that's the biggest hurdle. Yeah, there. and that's what I was getting ready to say. What if we have them to look and say, okay, instead of running, I think they said an eight day summer school program, how about we talk to some of our teachers in them while we're doing it, see what they want to do? By telling them to come back with us. Yeah, that's fine. And we got another meeting in two weeks. Yep. And say, okay, you're going to get two weeks off, but you're going to run. 15, 20 day summer school program. So maybe bring us and at that point in time, mm -hmm. like I said, I'm with John, I support her really yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. That that might um, mess with our we get so much funding for ESS from the state and we've stayed within that budget. <laughs> we start going in the 15, 20 days and, and more pay. It might have to come out of general funds. I'll just make that statement. That's, that's gray area. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, that's, that's a board decision. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, and, and I'll say this coming from middle school um, and run some schools the last, the last five years, we would typically target four weeks, four days a week. And we found that to be most successful. Or if we started and, you know, we had the holiday three days or do four, still fitting four days in. And Tuesday through Friday and Monday through Thursday, just uh, you know, thought the kids responded better when they had a three day weekend for that. So we would do four weeks, 16 days. Um, tackle, tackle that. So it sounds like we can discuss middle school next, I mean, middle school, uh, right. summer school the next four years. Maybe understand all these details. Hey, Tommy. Yes. That's what I think I've laid on the agenda is for the 25 school year. I mean, what, what you're talking about summer school, is that going to take my big 25? Oh, that, yeah, they'd be this year. Yeah, yeah, no, Sorry. So yeah. You probably need to, if you want to change that, whatever early rates you want, you probably need to put on, you know, an amendment to the 24 yeah. at the next meeting to okay. get that approved. That's right. I assume you got the ES, it says ESS state funding on there, $27 an hour. Yes, so that's, what that's the 25. Yeah, yeah, so you probably want to amend the 24 when I mean 24, unless it's already got 27 on there. Yeah, the 24 does have 27 okay. on there. Yeah. All right, good catch. All right, moving on to discussion of high school athletic uniforms. So, is this your topic, Anthony? Yeah. No? No, we got the donation statement. Yeah. So nobody requested what was that That's one? what you asked when you were saying that what was it? Right. About a full uniform for the high school. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we get half uniforms and not not full ones. Like in the is that what is that what it was? Oh I'm talking about the yeah. softball or the softball. Yeah, they get they get shirts and not pants. Yeah. And my question was why are we giving half uniforms when the parents having to do the other half? Well, no. Have they always done it this way? No, no we used to get. Yeah, get I think, uh, Was it a change? Uh, 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 it makes no sense to me. They were saying was under Title IX, which comes from what you had to do for girls, man, it's gone. So if we get football players full uniforms, we get basketball players full uniforms. Why some sports have to get their jersey only? The, the only sport I'm aware of that got part of a uniform was golf. Golf got polo shirts. Yes, they did. That, that, yeah, and it. then the, the, all it. their pants didn't match, right? They wore their own. Probably wore their own. But some might want to wear yeah. khakis and some <laughs> might want to wear. They're picky on some of that, and I don't know that. I don't know that the kids want to wear a uniform. We, we've also had years where tennis wanted to have two t-shirts. Some girls like to wear the skirts. Some girls don't like to wear the skirts. So 
So some of those things have been where they've had their own suggestions over the years that they would rather have two shirts instead of a full-fledged uniform um, because there will be different body sizes and some kids, you know, we've discussed before, if it was our kid, we would not sign off on the volleyball uniforms, but if I complain, so we'll roll with it. But, uh, you know, different people, different ways. But no, there's nothing that's ever said you're not supposed to buy a full uniform. I don't know why we would be not. Do you have daughters that played where they buying a full uniform back in that day? No, currently they're not paying for, they're, they're only being provided with the box, not their cell phone. Right. Okay. They have to provide their cell phone pants. Same yeah. when Kaylee was going through? Or? Well, so can you maybe look into that? Give them a report. Probably a little bit more intelligent. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, but also, uh, yeah, if they're doing it intentionally, I mean, maybe we should be a little bit more straight. Just come down a meeting with the coaches and, yeah. and, and see why we're where we're at. So it's, that's all Thank I can you. offer at this time. Yeah, yeah I just I, I no, think for teams and stuff, it should definitely, even if the parents want to, let's match at least. Okay. I would say. <laughs> well, I think they're supposed to, <laughs> in baseball and softball, they're supposed they're, to have on the same color right. yeah, yeah. pants. Changes from hold it. <laughs> the, uh, I, yeah, go ahead, Oh, so I assume we're just reapplying what we what yes. we're into now, minus our discussion about. Uh, I think you'll pick one. Which yes, one that's what I was going to do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's what I was going to do. Thank you. The uh, I moved to approve the uh, around that up on the 2024 extra duty salary schedule for the nearest 50. It's about eight dollars per position, so I'm just wrapped a zero amount and include to include the twenty-seven dollars an hour for the uh, ESS state funding. And how do I need to motion that to get that for this year? But it's twenty cents, but you yeah, can't have to this year as long as it's okay. still from twenty-five. But twenty-four, you, twenty-five. Yeah, you got twenty-seven in there already. It looks like, right? Mm -hmm. But did you want to change that? In? I mean, it's up to the board. Well, that's, that's what, what, what we were talking that's about, right? Though. That's not changed. Yeah. But yeah. was was we not just talking about looking at a different salary for? Yeah. For this year? Unless Argus is raising it to fifty, putting everything raised up to this fifty. Well, look, that's yeah. next year. You could leave it at twenty-seven. Decide what you're going to do with yeah. the summer school because if you're going to put in extra duties and extra salary, then just remember you have to amend this. But you have to decide what you're going to do. You have to point an amendment this time. It's currently. I'm talking about the 27, I'm putting them in the 27. As far as all the other stipends, I mean, I assume everybody's got that. I just yeah. turned that out. They think you yeah. just got on their nearest 50 and nearest 100 yeah. for increase. I guess I'm going to it for you. I printed it. It, it was in the yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, we got the, the other one. So, Harvest, your motion is to round up to the nearest 50 yes, and uh, do the $27 for ESS. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is that clear to everybody? The ESS state funding to 27 years. All right. All right. Is there a second to Hardy's motion? Clarity. We're rounding up no matter what to the next. Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's it just okay. It's just rounding it out, really. They don't want someone to get rounded they were, down. No. No, no. no it's rounding up. Uh, like They're just odd 742 numbers. would be 750. Some getting more rounded up than others, but yes. Yeah. It's just where they get. Yeah. Oh, we can round them down. Okay. 
Okay. So I actually second in. Any other discussion? No, ma'am. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four up. Thank you. Reviewing the NKU memorandum of agreement. I so move. Second. Thank you. Harvest moved. John seconded. This is for our um Northern Kentucky Review. Yes. So our um, college credit hours, correct? Correct. Yes. All right. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 4 0. Open a review approved bids for FFA surplus items. Okay. Yeah. You got those, Miss Joey, or you already gave them to her? No, don't have them. I don't know that we got into that. Okay, I don't think so. What did we bid on that Give us a list. No, we did. We had a list, but nobody submitted any bids. Well, when did we win? What and when did we bid on that? It's been out for. It was on last month for January. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. But yeah. we, we put it on the list. website and in the paper to go okay, to the so website we for surplus items. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. So we can just jump those items? Yes. You can, you can move to jump them, but I mean, is there anything you want to do with them? I mean, uh, run them, try them one more time, put them on, uh, put them on our Facebook page. The virtual boxes and everything for you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We better drive advertising. That's a good thing. Are you going to move the rebid? Yes. I'll move the rebid. Thank you. Thank you. So, John seconded. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor? Four up. All right, I think I'm caught up there. All right, uh, approved bids for landscaping services. Uh, is this the mulch on the center? Yes. All right, Ryan Landscare bid. Do we only have one? Do we have an open bid yet? No. No, we have some. I was instructed when we get a bid, we open that door. I've not seen it, it's not open. Okay, wowzy. Well, uh, $15,000 for the Walton, Kentucky. Cleaning, weeding, edging, mostly all landscape beds at Galveston High School District. It has two other quantities. A rate of seventy-five hundred dollars by fifteen thousand. So we're doing it twice, I see. And we pass it down. So we're not doing this with the maintenance workers that we hired. No. I thought we wanted our class to do it. That's exactly what. Yeah. That's where I thought we were at last time. Did anybody we just, talk to our, 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 My understanding was to bid it, uh, maybe work for the FFA, working on it. I mean, you refused to bid. We'll. I'm just saying, we went ahead as precautions. When we get our other maintenance workers, we don't have yet. Yes, that's something that we can improve. We just can't store the mold for our five bags. We just continued what we've done before. We did it. Draws the decision. We can cut it and figure something else out. We're good. So we're not impressed with this bed. But I have. No opinion about the bid. I, I just, I don't you know what it was that. last year, Miss McCarty. I, I'm sorry, I do not know. I do not know. I would have to look it up. That would take me a hot minute. And I'm sorry, I'm still struggling. Do you remember that? Sure. No, sorry, I'm I have no. Look it it's, up. it's gone up a little bit with inflation, uh, yeah. but I can't quote what it was last year. We called, we called them this year before uh, parent teacher conference. They came in with the crew and then. Four hours, the beds were done, the trees were cleaned, everything was taken care of, it. and they were done. Mr. Arvin, do you know who's Ryan Longcare. Ryan Longcare, I can look that up. Can you look it up, please? Yes. We do it twice a year. We do it in August, okay. the week before school starts, yeah. and then the week before graduation. Yeah. It's what we have targeted. That's an important time. Yeah, we want our place to look, we yeah. want to look good all the time, yes. but really yes. showcase yeah. it those two. It looked, um, excuse me, it looks like we paid about $5,600 per ton that came in last year. So it's up to $7,500. And they, obviously, they did not do it. we got our next meeting. Can we table that bid or can we take a motion to table? Yeah, I'll 
to it more. Well, I have a couple thoughts. I don't know. You tell me when I start doing them the wrong way. But my motion would be the table that did. Part B of that motion would be I would like for our administrative staff to talk to our uh, ag department and, and see if we can't have a learning opportunity for our own students. I would. I have no problems with that company. I'm sure they did an excellent job and will do an excellent job. But we're here to teach, and we got kids that ought to be wanting to learn. I, I would rather not look as good and have our kids learn through the experience than to pay somebody else to come in. I second that motion. Well, and, and one thing I had thought about doing was if, and again, whatever you guys decide, if we did go again with I'm this sure company, the question. that our students could work to maintain throughout the course of the year as well because that's something that we're obviously not getting right now once it gets done you know you know we're cleaning up a little bit as we go but that could be a thing that they could also work on just the maintenance of it mm -hmm. after it's done all right so we have a motion to table and a second any other discussion all in favor all right any opposed or oh all right, feel good. Do we carry on with that? But can can somebody check with Mr. Quella and sure. see if that's a possibility? I mean, if it's not a possibility, then we got to look at this hit. But I think it's a strong possibility. Okay, well, can, can you report? Not the FFA, of course, it's back in early 80s, but if you told me I get to go outside there and play here in mulch and pull weeds, I'd all that. I'd rather do that than be sitting in class. My heart is fine. Early okay. 80s, we had more. Back then. You, if you're in that class, would you want to go out? And do oh, yeah. I've done something in that class. I think I think that they should have been I think you should have been on it. I think you should have been on Sorry. Yeah. Um, I've done stuff in her class. Like, I've, I so haven't. Sometimes you have to ignore me. Yeah. It, it, uh, I haven't had one of her classes. But. Just sit there and pass what I have to All right. Now we're looking at the gasoline and fuel bins. Uh, okay, there's one from Southern Petroleum, maybe. And then one from Farrell. So we want fuel and gas and everything. Talk about one. Propane, correct? Yeah, diesel gas and propane should be. Yes. The only one that we got, I moved to. Those are the only two we got. I moved to accept. I get one, do get one? Two. Two. Barrel gas with propane. Yeah. You know, well, this one. Yeah. Is, this you got a diesel and gas, gas for one company oh. and a propane value. Oh, okay. What's the, yeah, that's how much is the other one? Southern Petroleum always price the hydro gas and diesel and barrel gas. I'll well, make a motion we accept Southern Petroleum for our gas and diesel. And I second that. Well, that's the only bid we got for the gas. That's the only bid we got. That's for propane. And I guess we got to vote on that before we move on. Yeah. Okay. okay, so motion by Hargis, second by John. That'll work. Any other discussion? All in favor? Oh, all right. All right. Any opposed? If, if John motioned to, on the propane, and I all second right. it. Correct. All right, propane to accept the only bid. John motion on the propane. Hargis second. And that's feral gas. Feral gas. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that was fun. Um, now we move on to the district calendar. We have to amend our district calendar. Right? Madam Chair, I so Okay, can you remind us? What are we? In? It's to fulfill uh, contract days for teacher whomever. I mean, we had two, we called the school off two days. Um, we had enough minutes to meet state requirements built in, right. um, but we still, faculty, still have to complete the contracted dates. So that's how we're going to school on the 23rd and 24th. Yes. Okay. So, and I'll get some principal's administration on the training and how they, that's, but it's, yes, it has two days. It's still 185. Thank you. So Hargis moved, John seconded. Any other discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Four zero. Review and approve all a classic basketball contract for the high school girls and boys. The motion approved. Okay. Go ahead, move. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Didn't make it. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. All right. Who? Who? John. 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 Okay, lastly, discussion high school gym sound system. We gotta get this fixed. Yeah, that's a discussion. Did they get the price to see what it is? Yes, so. <laughs> Here you come. So, the good this, news. so this, is, this is a quote from the individual that did our baseball, softball, and football. Uh, we over here, we just asked them to take a look at that. Um, and the only thing not priced on there that we could do, um, if you know you so desire, uh, they just don't have a lift price yet because they have to rent that. Uh, we could attach that receipt to this, you know, to print it up to a certain number. So they give us a bid. I don't know how much. No, they'll rent it, but they can't price that because pricing it when I receive the quote versus what it might be now, there's there's no way to know what that would be at ours. But that's, yeah. Did they mention how soon we could do it? I would be confident we could have this done by graduation. And how long is this be? Or this quote? Uh, 12, 12, 15. <laughs> Mine says 416 and 424. Uh, below that. That's why I printed it. Oh, yes, you did. Oh, okay. Does this thing still good? Mm -hmm. Do you recommend this? He did a fantastic job on the other three projects that we did. Miss Jody, is he happy with the softball sound system yes. and the players and things? As a parent, I am, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Oh, okay. He's a friend, too. All right. I didn't know this guy until he showed up the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving through. I'll second. We do have a thousand dollar um donation from North American Science. Yeah. Yeah. We need twenty three more of them. That might cover the lift and it's probably not. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a good well, hey, hey, well, thank you all for it. We're thankful for it. That's a good so I made the motion. Target seconded. Any other discussion? Everybody in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Four up. Make the motion, John. Thank you, John. Second. Ashley seconded. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Everybody here. I'm sorry if you very much fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>